today I'm gonna show you how to edit 10 times faster in DaVinci Resolve by taking the playback from this to this. We're diving into the world of proxies, exploring the codecs, weighing the pros and the cons, and mastering strategies like optimized media and render cache. Plus, we'll craft the ideal workflow for seamless editing if you're toggling between two workstations or working with a remote editor. Yeah, 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 memory, and this is what we're gonna be talking about today. These are the same chapters you're gonna find in the progress bar below. Organization is key. But let's kick off with the start of the day, the proxies. So first of all, what are proxies? Simply put, they are an alternative version of the original files, but optimized for editing. It all comes down to compression and resolution. The files straight out of camera are heavily compressed to save space and make delivery easier. But when you're working with the editing software, it has to decode all those frames often relying on others. It's like a book that references so many others that you need to read a lot of them to get the bigger picture. That is why when creating these files, we're gonna be preferring codecs that makes the frames kinda independent. The trade-off is that sometimes these files can be even bigger than the original, but the story is all there. But wait, there are some good options out there. Codecs like H.264 and H.265 are heavily compressed and may be a little bit more difficult to edit. On the other hand, codecs like DNxHR or ProRes are less compressed and much more edit-friendly. Another key aspect to consider is the resolution. Editing 4K or higher can really slow down your workflow. That is why temporarily dialing down the resolution can significantly lighten the load on your system, ensuring a smoother experience. Less pixels, less data, less effort. Quick side note, but very important one. The exported files always draw the information from the original ones. The proxies are just there to make the editing process a breeze. Okay, so how to generate these files? Let's take a look inside a project folder, and there are many subfolders with different types and different camera sources. There are screen recordings, log footage, different frame rates. And here's the cool part. Alongside DaVinci Resolve 18, you're gonna get another app called the Blackmagic Proxy Generator, which is gonna be the secret step one or maybe step zero in your workflow to use it before anything else. So let's walk through it. First, you're gonna open it up and you're gonna find this button called Watch Folders. And here you can choose even the parent folder. The software is gonna scout for clips below that in every subfolder and is going to transcode everything based on your selection here. And now you're probably wondering, didn't he say that these ones were tricky to edit? And it's true. Future updates might bring some updated codecs in this software, but for now, these are the options on Windows. But the good news is that I tested all of them and they're much easier to edit than the original files anyways. Playback is way smoother. On a Mac, you're gonna notice that there are some different options, including the ProRes that I mentioned earlier. The file size is gonna be a little bit larger, but you're gonna see very soon that not that much. The order here is going from smaller file sizes and decent quality to bigger file sizes and much better visual quality. On Windows, my go-to is usually the second one. And to me, that was the perfect balance between how big are the files, how smooth was the playback, and still retaining a little bit of a resolution so that I can, especially on screen recordings, be able to zoom in and out and still see what exactly is on screen. Now you're probably expecting a massive difference in quality and speed amongst all of these, right? I can tell you the quality, a little bit more, but speed, not as much. Now, these are the specs of my workstation and notebook just for reference. If you have a computer that is struggling even with 1080p, then you might be a little bit more picky with the codec. Okay, once you made your choice, just hit start, and the app is going to transcode all the footage below the one that is being watched. We're going to generate a proxy folder inside each of the subfolders. Now we can drag the whole folder inside Resolve. And remember that now we have every file duplicated, right? But it knows that it has to show you only one of them. Check out this pink label over here. This is the cue that there is a proxy file for this media. If you don't see it, just go to Playback, Proxy Handling, and Prefer Proxies. And you can also toggle it on and off here by the preview panel. Now take a look at this. Notice the difference between scrubbing before activating the proxies and after here on the timeline. It's way more fluid and playback stays consistently at 25 frames per second. Now you might ask, but how long will it take to make all of these files? So in my test, it was processing the files at 100 frames per second on average. This means that if you have roughly a one hour recording, it's gonna take about 15 minutes to transcode all of it. This is time you're gonna save later by editing way faster. Now one crucial point is that the proxy generator works best when you're first bringing the files inside Resolve. The thing is, during my test, subsequent activations of the software sometimes made it retranscode everything that was already done. 
So in that case, if you already started editing and you're bringing more files in, I would generate these proxies directly from inside Resolve. Wanna know how to do it? Let's check it out. Now let's say you added some small files in different folders. You don't need to go one by one. You can simply go to the Smart Bins, select Video Clips, and you're gonna be able to see all of them at once here. And to create proxies for these files, all you need to do is right click and go to Generate Proxies. But the thing is, there will be no dialog box at this point. You're gonna have to set everything before. So let's dive into the settings. So first, let's go to the menu, DaVinci Resolve, Preferences, Media Storage. And here you're gonna see the destination settings. But what really matters are the options down here, where it says if it's gonna go into the same folder where the original file is, but under a proxy folder, if they will go into this folder that is selected here, up here, or if you wanna be asked every time about it, about it. I prefer having the proxies together with the original media, but it's up to you. Now save that and go to the gear setting down here on the right. And under master settings, you're gonna find the optimized media and render cache settings. Our focus is here in this proxy media resolution drop down menu. So are you editing in 4K? This means that half resolution is gonna give you a full HD preview file that is not gonna hog up too much space and still give me a very clear preview. So let's take a look at the codec list here. And as you saw in the proxy generator, the options between Windows and Mac are gonna be a little bit different. But the idea is the same. These ones on the top have higher quality, but also much bigger file sizes. And the ones on the bottom are much smaller in space, but the quality is way lower. I created the proxies for a 400 megabytes file in all of these codecs here, just to see what was the size and what was the quality inside the video. So you can reference to this table and pause and screenshot and do whatever you like to have it as a reference later. Now, not to make you go crazy like I did and test everything, I'm just going to sum up the results for you. In general, ease of use for all of these was roughly the same. This is the playback before and after using any of these. Super smooth, you can see how this playhead on the preview panel just follows precisely the movement of the mouse, which really doesn't happen before proxies. Mouse. Regarding that, really, whatever you choose is gonna work. But here, just remember what I said before about computers struggling even with 1080p. Then you wanna move a little bit upper in the list to make it easier. Now the big question, why not just choose the smaller file size then? As I said, editing speeds improve with any of the options here, but the preview really changes. Check out the background on this clip when we move the hue from blue to green. The original file is really flexible due to the 10-bit codec, all the information inside the file, the color depth. The proxy files hold way less information. Now remember, this is not going to impact the final result. The color grading can be done on the original files and the export also is gonna consider them. But then if you wanna be able to watch it back with the color grading and analyze it, you might prefer codecs like the DNxHR444 or the ProRes 422. So now let's talk a little bit. <laughs> Come on, like who can be calling at this time? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you upload the files? Man, no, like the test took so long. I tested every single codec. I'm still recording the video right now. Man, it's... how could it take so long in a video? Oh, man, the viewers, they're amazing. They left so many comments and using the links in the description and everything. Today I'm gonna tell them about the Skillshare courses, the free ones, about video production and video editing. And the CapCut one is cool. Man, it's more than 8,000 students. It's insane. It's a win-win for everyone. Yeah, totally. But when are you going to send the ah, files? Very good point. So let, let me just go now. I have to put a screen recording here. See you later. Ciao, 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 ciao. ciao, ciao. Okay. So now let's talk about how to work with a remote editor. So by now you have all the proxy files hanging together with the original media, but there's no need for you to go folder by folder yes. copying stuff. The first option is using the Blackmagic proxy generator right from the start, especially if you're not gonna be doing any editing in your local workstation. Just go here, it's gonna collect all the proxies for you and create the folder with the same structure. The second way actually involves creating the project in your current workstation and exporting an archive. Even if you do some editing, you create some timelines, this can go together. Just right click and go to export archive. You can choose a destination folder here, and then you're gonna be presented with this dialog box. box. Depends on what you wanna do, but if you just wanna send the proxy files, you can select them and then unselect and then deselect. And then deselect, and then deselect all the other options. It's gonna grab all the proxy files and put it in a folder and also grab the project file and put it there. There. Now all you need to do is upload this folder somewhere for your remote editor or just copy it to another drive and take it wherever you need. Now how to continue editing all of these from another computer? If you copied only the proxy files, you're gonna see that they have the icon in the thumbnail and when you throw them in the timeline, you're also gonna see that there's the purple line above. 
this indicates that the media down there is only proxy. But there's a cool trick here. Imagine that after you finish editing, you just want to export a file to be able to review it before finishing it off. And it is possible in the delivery page, if you check this box here, which says use proxies only, it's going to do an export based on the proxies. By default, this is not selected. And this is a good thing because when you have both files, the original and the proxies, you don't want it to export using the proxies. And after it's approved, all you need to do is send back all the media you added to the project, if that's the case, and export just the timeline to be re-imported in the original workstation. Now, DaVinci has many options to make things a lot smoother, but it gets also confusing. Let's chat about this dynamic trio in Resolve called Optimize Media, Render Cache, and Proxies. And the good news is that you don't have to decide between them. You're gonna mix them up. Proxies are gonna be mainly useful if you wanna transport these files somewhere else. Now, if you don't plan to take this project anywhere else, you can just use optimized media. And this is super useful, especially when you have really big files that you don't need to convert entirely. You're just going to use some snippets. So you can create optimized medias just for these parts. And here's the plot twist. Then people could think that render cache is absolutely useless. But actually, no, you're gonna use render cache on top of optimized media and proxies. The thing is, even with the best codec and lowest resolution, it's still possible to have the playback stuttering like this. And this mainly happens when you add some really heavy effects like noise reduction, for example. But when you come up here to the menu in the playback and you enable the render cache, this is what's going to happen. If you see the red line on top of the clip, it's in the queue for rendering as soon as you're not editing anything. If you don't see it, you can force it by right-clicking the clip and going to this option. Now slowly, slowly, Resolve is gonna turn this red line into blue, and this is the playback you get. Pretty cool, eh? Ah, there's a bonus here, which is the playback resolution, in which the software tries to live reduce the resolution of the preview panel to make it a little bit easier. But yet, it's not the most efficient way. Okay, let's sum it up with some important things to note and some warnings. In the color grading page, deactivate the proxies. Grade it with the original files, as you're using a massive codec. When it's time to export, double check those boxes, just to be sure. They should be off as you want Resolve to use the original files to export. Now here, you don't even need to worry because Resolve is gonna tell you if there's any media file missing. Just a catch, if you're in that situation in which you want to export a preview file, for example, just using the proxies, it's still gonna tell you that there's files missing, but you can still export. It's gonna use the proxy files when there's only them available and the original ones if they're there. A question I know many of you are gonna make. Can you use another software to make the proxies? And the answer is yes. You could use Handbrake, for example, but there are some rules to follow. The timecode has to match the source file. You have to keep the same file name, excluding the extensions. The frame rate has to match. And you have to choose a format and a codec that is supported inside Resolve, like the ones we mentioned. Okay, wrapping it up, proxies are gonna be your best friend, saving you lots of headache and time, especially if you're editing in more than one workstation. And remember, all the techniques we talked about are complementary, so you just have to choose when to unleash each one of them. I would like to see a little bit better integration between the proxy generator and the codex inside DaVinci, but it's already good enough to fit my workflow. So I'm sticking with it. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna use it also. And since you're a fan of editing content, you might love this video over here. It's amazing what you can do these days with free software like Resolve and CapCut, for example. And it's when you begin to mix them up that you can create really crazy stuff that is just really gonna pop. So I'll catch you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.